we can be really grateful to these seven, six, seven colleagues actually, because one was missing. So I think we have a collection of points. Again, uh, sorry. I think all of that is fit for thought. I don't think that we need a final statement about uh, what is important. You have had seven people saying, well, for me, this is the most important. And uh, actually, each of us has to decide what was important in this Congress for, for, for them. But uh, again, uh, <clears throat> my purpose was not to give good marks or bad marks to, to, to talks or to say this is more important than that. I think it's to help each of them, each of us, again, uh, as uh, Roberto said uh, this morning, well, what did I learn? So I will take a quarter of an hour or something to give some points. Actually, many of them have been touched already by our, by our colleagues. So for, uh, the very first talk we had and, uh, and the session of today was a work with and for farmers. I think that none of us can disagree with that. We, we all want to do something like that. However, we all know that uh, we cannot have one breeding program per farmer or per uh, field. And to, to some extent, I think at least I have learned something about breeding in drought prone areas with very convincing strategies that have been shown in the US, in Mali, in China, in India. Well, analyzing the main constraint in, in a region, having hypotheses that are driven by simulations, then a breeding program, and then test in farmer field. So uh, I found this sequence of, of uh, events extremely interesting and uh, perhaps for first time in, in my life, sorry about that, I've seen breeding as a really, <laughs> as a scientific approach with hypothesis and with, uh, uh, so sorry for all those, but it's the first time I understand that. I don't claim that it, not, it did not exist before. And well, you have here the little devil. Uh, do you see me, my devils? No? Okay. So there are little devils who say horrible things uh, all over my, my, my talk. And also, it was the first time that I saw really an effective uh, use of particip participatory breeding. Uh, here, uh, in all these talks in which farmer were involved at the beginning, at the end, and during, but not giving all the stuff because, again, we cannot have one breeding program per farm. Second thing is, has been touched, I think, by 16 and uh, Santiago. What is this thing named drought? Uh, we have heard here that it's defined at different scale, scales, plant to landscape, at different time scales. We have heard minutes to years. As Graham has said today, into drought, uh, core is on plants. So definitely the, the, the most important thing for us is for plant or canopy, it's the same for in this case. Uh, drought is defined by a balance between evaporative demand and soil offer. So it, there have been many uh, insistence by many talks that the air drought is as important as the soil drought because the plant is just in the middle. So the water deficit is uh, a balance. So this balance is very clear over minutes and it's perhaps less and less clear over days, weeks, months. But yield, unfortunately or fortunately, is on a uh, crop side. So uh, that's why one of the key words of this Congress has been scenarios of drought with the timing combination of light VPDs, soil water status, etc. We have also heard that the high performance 
is not stable performance is not survival. This does not preclude any the interest of survival. Survival can be extremely important for pasture, for instance. We have seen several things about that. So I don't say that one or another of these things is more important than the others. I just say that it's not the same. And this has been very clear exposed. Water use efficiency is not efficient use. This has been said several times. So here comes the little devil. Probably drought stress that we like to use is about as precise as I don't feel well. So drought stress is a lot of things, not precise at all. So I don't think there is any medical treatment for I don't feel well. When you go to your doctor, you precise your symptoms and then you have a treatment. So perhaps we may want to use drought turns only over beers, but uh, when we are during working time, uh, we probably want to be more precise and talk about scenarios. Uh, and again, this has been touched by several of our young colleagues. This is important because at the end of the day, uh, this will change our way of uh, thinking and of working. Drought and climate change. So I don't think that in this audience there is any doubt about climate change. However, I have heard something that I really did not expect. Will drought get worse? Uh, I thought yes. I heard probably not. There is a debate. I think we are scientists. We are here to follow the science. So if we, we will see, and uh, I think we are all open. But the thing in which there is no debate, and it was said over different talks all over the week, is that the year-to-year -year variability is much higher than the trend anyway. So whether the trend is like that or like that, perhaps we don't care. But the year-to-year -year variability is essential. And the variability is essential to farmers because a farmer has nothing, does not know what a mean is, he knows what each year is, so the risk is absolutely essential for a farmer. And variability has been one of the keywords of ID as well. So what the little devil says here, perhaps we should define what a deficit as a probability of events, of, of the, how the event is serious, what a potential VPD, etc. also the probability of that. Because I think that neither farmers nor scientists are interested in means. We are interested in risk, changes, variability, etc. And I think this is common to farmer and scientists and mitigation of risk, not of drought. Analysis of risk, not of right, etc., is probably essential. And this has been said again and again, and even this morning. Physiological processes, timescales. Uh, you may remember that I asked several times, okay, but what, what is the role of uh, physiology here, or what is the role of, uh, of breeders here, etc.? So we have heard on the first day several talks. Drought stress is the result of a flux. So again, this can be defined over minutes. I don't think, well, we always can calculate a, a flux uh, uh, above days and years, but then it becomes slightly difficult to, to analyze. And the plant responses are basically at the time course of minutes as well. We have heard of aquaporins, of uh, growth, uh, water transfer to root apices. All of that is minutes. So we are in a big trouble because we are interested in yield and yield is a crop cycle. And furthermore, uh, yield, we have heard several times, yield is a, at canopy level and the canopy is an assembly of cells, organs, plant that each have their own life. And uh, the imaging property, the self-organization, it's things that we have heard again and again. And obviously the total is more than the elements. So we need to, to, to whenever we, have to, we are to mechanisms and even this genetic variability of the mechanisms, we are more at organ and minutes. When we are interested in yield, we are at canopy and, and month. So we have to play with that. So 
Yeah, physiologists like minutes and organ breeders like crop cycle and yield. And uh, we have seen several times that models can help to reconcile. That's a non-controversial statement. Now comes another one that perhaps you will agree, perhaps not. What I've heard is that the timing of plant responses is perhaps as, as much as important as the process itself. So we have heard many things of, about keeping water for later, avoiding high VPD in the afternoon or in some days, etc. Day versus night, timing of irrigation. So we can stick with each with our own equation and see what is here and what is here, water use efficiency or transpiration efficiency is a very good example of that. If we stick with that, with the ratio, perhaps we don't address the proper thing. Perhaps the time and the space are more important. And I think that timing has been a key keyword of Interdrug 5. Roots, we have heard a lot about roots. Uh, we can say that at last they received the attention they deserved during a long time. Uh, there was probably not enough about roots. So here we have heard about mechanism of growth, architecture, orders, genetics, QTLs, collocation, breeding. It's perhaps the trait on which we have had the whole thing from the mechanisms to the breeding and the success story of the breeding, etc. Then the little devil says, okay, but is that true really that uh, roots are so essential? I think it's perhaps healthy to ask this question. Obviously, the, the, the most striking thing we have seen was in rice. Rice has been selected in water, has basically no roots, and we want to put it in uplands and we need roots. And here we have huge QTLs, huge effect, huge effect of breeding programs, etc. Is that completely true in other species? Probably we can expect minor effects. And the bigger devil, we have heard today, but also before, the concept of root redundancy. Uh, the literature is not short of many uh, breeding programs that have actually decreased the root system. So probably we have to think that more or better roots is not necessarily better terrains. It depends. And uh, why does it depend? Because roots are not at all free. So we have seen the story of the timing of uh, water uptake. If you take up a lot of water at the beginning, then you run out of water at the end, and uh, the weak root system could end up being better. And the carbon cost, we have heard that a lot, that the roots cost a lot, and it's not necessarily the ideal situation to stuff all your profile uh, of roots, and we have seen example of that. Phenotyping. This has been addressed also by our colleagues. I was probably many of you know that I have an other life in phenotyping. And uh, what I've seen was really honey in my, in my ears. In many, or, or if not all talks, uh, there were field methods with drone, with uh, etc. platforms. I think we have seen very efficient, and this was uh, touched by our colleagues. Efficient con connection between field and platform, single single plants and canopies. Have seen that for root angle, for leaf growth, transpiration efficiency. I think there is space for all of that. I've also seen something probably extremely important that has been touched by my colleagues, which is census in farmer's field, in networks of field, etc. We will do nothing even in farmer's field, if we don't have a proper environmental characterization, even in the field. Now, a sensor costs about 200 euros, $200. Uh, the farmer can, have with his smartphone, get the, get the information. Going to sensors will allow huge difference, and this may well profoundly 
affect the physiology and the breeding. Because until now, uh, more often than not, we have yield, and then we could speculate about all the possible reasons why yield was different or why I had QTL here or not. And we have seen several examples that this QTL happened here, it does not happen here. So measuring even in farmer's field uh, may really change the things. So the devil here is not for this community, it's probably for my, the other part of my brain. So I have heard purposeful phenotyping, cheap phenotyping but useful, and have seen here that uh, phenotyping in this community is a tool rather than an aim. And uh, I think that the drought community is really perhaps the best community for phenotyping because we do phenotyping for something. And my last point, all the concept of interdrought is to have breeders in the center. And I think that we have seen very clearly that still today, okay, there is transgenic, there is CASP, CASP um, uh, genome editing, etc. But still, uh, exploiting the natural genetic variability has a huge impact and has a huge perspective. So we have seen many traits with a very large genetic variability. We have seen many traits with higher heritability for many traits, root, shoot, stomatal conduction, blah, blah, blah. We have seen very large QTLs or small large, stable, not stable, but QTLs at the end.